Today we're going to talk about systems, center of mass, and conservation of linear momentum. What is a system? What do we mean by a system in physics? A system is defined as any specific collection of bodies. The key notion is that you have any bodies. That's a system. So for example, two blocks on a surface, those correspond to a system. We've seen this kind of system before. Here's a surface, frictionless, with block A and block B up against each other, and then we uh, put an applied force on block A so that the whole thing moves to the right. We can call those two bodies, A and B, together one system. Here I mark the system in red. The whole system, the whole entire thing, kind of filled in conceptually here, that's the system, A and B together, the two bodies together. Now here, the acceleration of A is equal to the acceleration of B, which is the same as the acceleration of the whole system. They move together, so the two accelerations are the same. So that means we can apply Newton's second law in a very straightforward way. We can say the force on the system is equal to the mass of the system times the acceleration of the system. Uh, and so we can just find the acceleration by substituting in the mass of the two blocks together as the mass of the system. And the only force applied is the applied force. So the acceleration is the applied force over the sum of the two masses. Very easy to get the acceleration when you treat this as a system. Likewise, uh, we have a situation where we have a frictionless surface. We can imagine block B and then block A stacked on top of it with friction between the two blocks. And then some applied force. So again, the two blocks together could be considered a system. In this case, you have exactly the same algebra for calculating the acceleration of the system. Okay, so now another example, another of a system. Again, we have a frictionless surface and two blocks, A and B. But now the two blocks are in two different places. A is over here and B is over here. Maybe A is moving to the right so that you have some kind of collision between A and B. A collides with B. How can we contend with this? Well, again, we have two bodies, so we can create a system. Body A and body B together, now connect them together with an imaginary line, the cadet together are considered a system. A and B together are a system. So, the, the problem here is that A and B do not accelerate together. A does not, the acceleration of A is not the same as the acceleration of B, especially during the collision. So how do we apply Newton's second law to this problem? Well, we need a new concept, and that new concept is the center of mass of the position of the system, the center of mass position for the whole system. So this is just uh, the weighted average position, the weighted average. What do we mean by the weighted average? We mean the average position, but weighted by the mass of each particle in the system. So for example, if the mass of A were equal to the mass of B, then the center of mass position would be the sum of the two positions divided by two. What does that mean? That means if I have position A at XA, and Bach B a position XB, then the center of mass point is a point that's halfway between the two. Right there, center of mass point, which is halfway between the two positions. It's the average position if the two masses are the same. Now, what if uh, the mass of A is not equal to the mass of B? What is the center of mass then? Well, the position of the center mass is equal, defined as the weighted average. So MAX plus MBX divided by the mass of the system, which is just MA plus MB. 
That's my definition, weighted average position. I can likewise calculate the velocity by taking the time derivative. So I get, the, again, weighted velocities, mavA plus mbvb over mabb, over ma plus mb. And likewise, the acceleration is just the time derivative of the velocity, which again, is just the weighted average acceleration. These are all kinematic quantities describing the velocity and the acceleration and the position. So now, what can we do with these? Well, we can now ask the question, what does Newton's second law look like for our system? What's its appearance? How do we apply it? Well, again, we have the net force on the whole system, but I'm interested in the external forces only, and we'll get to why that is. The net force is equal to the mass of the whole system times the acceleration of the center of mass point. In other words, for any system, it's the center of mass point that gives you the kinematic position of the system. And of course, this is a vector equation, so it applies in any of one dimensional coordinates. So in the special case, for example, where I have uh, the net, if, if it is the case, sorry, if it is the case that the net force on the system, external force, is equal to zero, then sort of intuitively the acceleration of the center of mass is zero, and therefore the velocity of the center of mass must be constant. So no net force, constant velocity of the center of mass. Therefore, if I multiply that times the mass of the system, that's also a constant. We can call this thing the momentum of the entire system. The total momentum, m cis times vcm, is equal to a constant, p tot is equal to p tot prime. In other words, linear momentum for the system is conserved. Oh, I'm sorry, I got my camera rolled off the edge there. So if the system is isolated, which is to say, no external net forces on the system as a whole, then linear momentum for the entire system is conserved. This is the condition for the application of conservation of linear momentum. Linear momentum is conserved if the net force on the system is zero. You can only apply conservation of linear momentum if the system is isolated to external forces.